Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hard fought win on Saturday. Uh, tremendous uh, environment, great atmosphere. Uh, it was uh, nothing came easy, that's for sure. Talked to the guys about that at length yesterday, about uh, the resolve and toughness and grit that uh, we showed for 60 minutes. Uh, I think our guys knew going in it was going to be a fist fight and um, uh, everything was going to be difficult to get. And um, so pleased with how we handled uh, you know, the first half. I think we got outplayed and had a 7-6 lead. We weren't stopping them on defense until they got in the red zone. And then we were able to get some good stops, which we talked about. And I thought they did some really good things against us uh, defensively and then at halftime. Made some adjustments, uh, but uh, biggest thing is we needed to get off the field on, on defense and try to stay on the field on offense. We were able to do that, didn't capitalize with a lot of points, but uh, um, we were able to get the one field goal with, uh, with Chris and hold those guys a couple times when they got into our territory. So uh, great credit to our, to our players for staying the course for, for four quarters. Uh, we got beat up pretty good uh, from the game. Uh, just injury report that we'd have a handful of guys that would probably be questionable if it were a game this Saturday, but uh, uh, nobody that got injured uh, on Saturday would be uh, out significant amount of time. I think the closest guy would be Khalid, uh, but uh, we would envision everybody practicing, probably not this week, but uh, next week for sure. We didn't lose anybody long term. How much of this week is spent on development and just healing guys' bodies and getting them right? A, a bunch of it. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a development practice, <clears throat> working a lot of guys on special teams, some kids that haven't played yet, some other guys that uh, uh, are are in the two deep, um, but more specifically special teams guys. And then we're taking the young players, mostly the, uh, the freshmen and first or second year guys, and uh, doing some uh, K-State versus K-State team, get those guys away from the scout cards and get them back to, uh, you know, our schemes offensively and defensively. We'll do that uh, uh, quite a bit today and tomorrow. We'll do a little bit uh, of TCU here uh, in the next couple of days as well. What kind of luxury is it to be able to play press on both corners uh, like you did a lot on Saturday? You know, that was not really the, the plan going in because of all the motions and shifts that Iowa State gives you. Uh, and we gave up a couple of what we would call easy access throws uh, early on. And so we made an adjustment um, to go to more press with Echo and, and Julius. And uh, probably, well, I know, not probably, we definitely did. We pressured more on Saturday than we have in, in previous games. And a lot of that was out of necessity because of the, the shorter routes, the crossing routes, and, and some of the um, routes that were at the sticks of, of trying to play tighter coverage. Uh, Chris, DJ had an interesting thing to, thing to say after the game. Somebody asked him if he imagined he would be doing this right now. And he said, no, actually, because y'all uh, entered the recruiting picture with him so late in the process, yeah. he didn't know if it would happen. Can you uh, enlighten us on how you guys you know connected there late? Well, so much respect for, for Junction City, what Coach Zim does in the program. And, and uh, uh, we had tracked DJ, and uh, I'd been able to see him play just because of Colby being at Manhattan uh, when Colby was a little bit younger. And so I was really impressed uh, with DJ. And um, uh, we did enter, enter it pretty late, but uh, always were impressed with him as a player. And um, we were able to get him late in, in the process. And... Uh, like I said, last year I thought he had a good development year, um, but probably wasn't ready uh, this year. Even though we have Deuce, we knew that he would continue to progress and get better and better. And you saw in practice in fall camp when we'd sit Deuce a lot, uh, the pop in him, the explosiveness, uh, his ability to run through contact. And so it was just a matter of maybe time or – circumstance that he would get an opportunity he's he was you know by Missouri probably the clear number two for us and so uh, you know Deuce got dinged up a little bit and he did some really good things and so we've got to find some ways to continue to f get him on the field and get him some touches how's your progression from the wide receiver room gone it's gone well uh, you know the the three guys are are 
the mainstays right now. Keenan played a little bit more uh, on on Saturday, which is good because he had a really good week of practice. Um, and so we're excited about him. RJ's been kind of dinged up a little bit, but uh, been playing him and, and doing some good things with RJ. Uh, we've got great confidence in him. Xavier Lloyd's continuing to improve. Jaden Jackson's continuing to learn our system. So um, we have some guys that um, – uh, are, are pushing those those three top guys, but uh, uh, we still like our development and, and growth there, and and uh, think not only this year but the future is bright there. How would you assess the play of your offensive line through the first half of the season? It's been good. It's uh, we've you know we lost TP so early, and uh, so it kind of put us into a spot where um, we had to play Hadley because we wanted to play Hadley a little bit more at center. And fortunately for us, Gilly's playing so well that um, we haven't really worried about pushing him back into center. We've kept him at guard to replace TP. Uh, I'm excited to get line gang back. Uh, he's you know, He missed some time, so he's getting back into the practice mode, and he's kind of our swing guy. And Carver is, is, the, is the swing guy at tackle, more at right tackle than anywhere, but could play left tackle. So and then Dawson Del Forge has come on a little bit, but I, I've been you know BB's a great player and is an All Conference player. KT's playing really well. Duff's playing well, but uh, I think the the guy that's been most impressive to me uh, is Gilly, uh, just because he hasn't played that many snaps uh, prior to this year, and he's really done a great job with communication as well as just his play, and it's allowed Hadley to get more reps at guard and get him more comfortable. You mentioned DJ as a guy that you maybe want to see more out of in the second half of the season. Is there anyone else that kind of jumps off the page that you want to work on with the bye week? Um, you know, Des Purnell. Uh, and, and once again, it's you always have to prepare for your opportunity and don't let your circumstance dictate uh, how you prepare for that opportunity. And, and he, he knew he was the backup behind Khalid. Um, but we always talk about being a play away from, from having to take significant snaps and – um, Khalid goes down in, in really the second or third play of the game, and Dez has got to play pretty much every snap. We went to nickel a couple of times when he came out, but if not, he played over 50 snaps and um, did some really good things. Uh, I think he was trying to feel his way through, and then he realized that, you know what, I'm, I'm good enough. I can play at this level, and we talked to him about it. Nick Allen was, was great with him on the sideline. Nick was challenging the heck out of him, but that's Nick. Um, Nick's a great leader, and I was challenging him, and Devin and Steve were challenging him, and, and he he rose up. He made some really good plays. So pleased with with uh, where Dez is at, uh, and he's a guy that we're going to continue to push. Um, you know, the defensive line rotation, we still got to find more plays probably for Uso because I think uh, um, he's pro he's progressing well enough that we got to get him some more snaps. It'll probably help Eli out. Uh, Stuffelmean made a couple of really good plays when he was in there. Uh, Mott's playing well. Uh, that was as healthy as Nate has been uh, all season. So uh, this week will come at a great time for Nate to get uh, his body back because we're going to need him uh, moving forward. So uh, just um, with the defensive line, I think the rotations have helped us, but uh, some of the guys will probably even out some of those reps. Now that you're in the approaching the back half of the season. Do you start to look at some of the guys that you plan on redshirting for those uh, yeah, four games? Yeah, but we look at that all the time, Fitz. There's some guys that you've seen early in the season that we've kind of held back on now um, because they've played a couple of games and um, don't want to put a guy in, you know, not, not necessarily for mop-up duty, but for a play here or there that could cost them that game. Uh, there's really no mop-up duty right now in, in our league, so it's just – trying to and it's harder on the road because anybody you take on the road you have to be willing to play uh, because of injuries and, and you don't have that depth and um, it came into it came into play this weekend um, Jack Bloomer who's our backup punter played some snaps on punt return and uh, Jack's been playing so, or being involved in the drill work so much that he knows all the techniques, and uh, we trust Jack, so we put him in there. But uh, there are still a handful of guys that are right around that two- and three-game stretch that um, uh, you never know. Let's say Des were a guy, and he's not, but all of a sudden you get a guy hurt, well, that guy's got to be ready to step in and play. And, and uh, that's the hard thing about managing uh, the roster and managing playing time and managing 
uh, people um, is, you know, how much is enough where you feel like they're getting uh, a good use out of the year, but it's all still about the team and what it, what we have to do to make sure the team is successful. Follow up to that. You've made it halfway through the year without, without having to play Will Howard. Yeah. In a in a perfect world, would you like to play him four games yeah. and get the red shirt? Um, let's just say we'd like to get the red shirt. I can't tell you on the games because it's so it's so different. You just don't know how things are playing out, and um, we're so pleased with Adrian right now and how he's grown. Uh, and uh, I think you guys can all see uh, in different ways. And I told him this. I thought he played his best game on Saturday. Uh, he, he, you know, did some unbelievable things uh, against Oklahoma. Did some unbelievable things against Texas Tech. Uh, but just when he had to make a play for us on Saturday, he made the play, uh, made the plays. He got us out of some really bad situations with changing calls. He just in that environment, in a tight, tight ball game, he was so calm. Uh, I, I thought he played a phenomenal game, and so. Um, you know, if, if Adrian can stay healthy and, and it uh, plays itself out, I don't know how much Jake uh, or, or Will will be in there, but uh, we'd like to preserve Will's year. Coach, Josh Hayes, Big 12 Defensive yeah. Player of the Week. You were with him at North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. Just how much has he meant to you and to this team? Well, uh, I've known him for a long time and um, known his uh, parents for a long time and uh, have had a couple of home visits with him. Uh, but uh, he's been um, every bit as good as we thought he would be and, and knew he could be. Um, really proud of, of Josh for coming in here and, um, you know, making a name for himself but not being overbearing as far as uh, thinking it's his team or anything like that. He just fit in with our guys really well. He's been a corner his whole life. And um, about three days into spring practice, four days into spring practice, we said, Josh, we need you to play safety. And I, I thought it would help him uh, is for his ability to play at the next level if he played something more than just corner. And uh, whether he's a nickel, whether he's a safety at the next level, I think he's proving that he can play at the next level. Uh, I, I've always known it. I think Josh has always known he has the ability, but I think the skill set that we're putting him in now is is really showcasing his his talents. And he's a very physical player. He's a very talented player. He's a very smart football player. And he just there's something about a guy that loves football like like that. And Josh is a football junkie and loves to compete. And uh, you know I, I think Iowa State tried to match him up a, a few times with eight. Uh, thinking they could get a safety uh, on him, uh, which is the smart thing to do. But Josh has got such real, such good corner skills that he was able to to make some big plays. And then on Sunday, Skylar Thompson makes his NFL debut. I don't know if you had a chance to watch that game. If have you had a chance to talk with him at all? Just what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, we texted back and forth on Sunday night or Monday morning. I can't remember just how proud I was of him um, handling the circumstance, handling the environment. Uh, I, I watched just a little bit of it back and forth, but uh, I just was impressed with um, – he just seemed calm. He seemed like he belonged, and, and uh, I, I just thought he did a great job of handling the circumstance of not knowing you're going to play. I didn't see when uh, the other quarterback got hurt, so I didn't know what the plan was, if he was going to play or not. But uh, uh, I got the text like probably everybody else did in our football office that he was in the game, and so – um, tried to find it and, and was able to, to follow him a decent amount. And uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, he was he was happy that uh, he got a chance and got his feet wet. And who knows what's going to happen um, in the future there. But uh, uh, excited for him. It was a big moment for him. Four guys you've coached, Easton Stick, Carson Wentz, Trey Lance, Skylar Thompson, all are on NFL rosters. Yeah. I don't believe there's any other college coach or there's any other college coach that has that number of quarterbacks in the NFL. What is the secret sauce with Chris Kleiman and uh, NFL quarterbacks? Uh, 
I didn't know. I don't know how many of, of I know those four guys, but I don't know how many other coaches. It's 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 a credit to those players. It's it's not me. It's a credit to those players. It's a credit to uh, to the Colin Kleins and the Randy Hedbergs that developed these guys and and uh, coached the heck out of them and, and prepared them and and uh, for me it was just believing in them more than anything. And I I, I know that from a, from a vantage point of a defensive minded head coach letting a quarterback know how much you believe in him is very very important and um uh, loved all those kids told them i loved them believed in them and um they have god-given ability and then the qb coaches they've had have been really good tv excuse me tv cameras caught uh your and, and gene's celebration yeah. after that last first down was that anything more than just relief and excitement after a, a close fought hard fought win um i grew up in iowa and had a lot of family there i know how hard it is to win in ames iowa and uh been in ames at night uh, on a number of occasions as an assistant and to play at ames at night in that environment and it was a great environment it was a big win for for our team and um you know, a couple of guys sent me texts that I that I trust in the profession and trust, and just said, you know what, it's okay to enjoy a big win, uh, and appreciate you showing the emotion. And it was uh, it was a it was a big win uh, at the right time coming into a bye week, and uh, knowing that guys like Deuce were out, Felix was out, Khalid was out, uh, DJ's making plays, and Des Purnell's making plays. Um, it wasn't easy, and. Uh, you know, people talk about ugly wins and stuff. I think it still counts as a win, and that's that's all that really matters. Uh, and uh, it was so. It was a it was a big night for for K State football. Coach, I think you're about halfway through the first year with um, Colin as your offensive coordinator. Thinking back to when you made the decision to hire him as your offensive coordinator, can you explain what kind of things you were looking for, um, maybe stylistically, schematically, with him taking over in that position? Um, what you're seeing is what I thought as far as um, mixing up tempos and mixing up formations and getting the best 11 guys on the field at a number of different times. And I, when you go on the road um, and uh, the crowd's really into it and you're able to go fast, you're able to slow it down when you need to, you're able to have different cadences, it uh, it creates problems for a defense. It creates a problem for us. I know that it create, creates it at, at home, especially when people go fast on you. And um, so the style that Colin and I spoke about uh, when we were together uh, last December for a while on the road is what I envisioned we were going to do. I, I think we're still, you know, six games into it. Colin would say the same thing. We're still growing as an offense. We're still learning as an offense. Um, I think our best football is still ahead of us as an offense. The thing that probably excited us as, as coaches and even our players when we met here yesterday is we still haven't played our best football. And uh, we are playing as hard as any team I've ever been associated with. Our kids lay it on the line every Saturday and play their tails off. We're making some mental errors on both sides and on special teams that we need to clean up. And so this is a big week for us to to clean some of those airs up. And some of it is 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 focus and some of it is is the environment and the pressure and all those things. But we need to just clean up some of those mental airs and continue to play as hard as we are. And then I, I can live the, with the results because uh, those kids are, are are laying it out there every Saturday. Continue that. What areas of Collins' progression through these first six games has really impressed you the most from a head coach's perspective? Just his ability to mix things up, you know, um, run and pass and, and tempo and not tempo and uh, just trying to get the playmakers the ball, uh, everything. It's Once again, we're six games into it, but uh, I'm excited about the progress we've made, and I know there's continued growth there. Uh, you talked about with uh, Khalid at uh, – at Sam linebacker, you wanted to get a little more size in there, mm -hmm. but now Des I think is listed at 215 pounds. Yeah. Are you using him differently, or do you have anybody else? Yeah, we haven't uh, kind of dug into that yet, as far as what we would do, because um, Khalid's not ruled out by any means. Um, 
for TCU. There's a good chance he can play at TCU. So we're going to go through this week uh, because it's such a development week for us and not worry about um, the schematics of how we're going to change things uh, because Cleed doesn't have a long-term injury. But Des, we didn't change the game plan. Des, Des blitzed a decent amount. Des was on the line of scrimmage, and he's he's not as big. There's no question about that. But <clears throat> he's he's productive and, and uh, uh, he's instinctive uh, inside there. So um, we'll continue to you know evaluate that as we learn more about Khalid, as as well as you know we'll probably move. Crew Jackson will will get more reps. Uh, Jake Clifton, who's been in in between Sam and Will, will play some more Sam as well. Could Deuce have finished out that game if you needed him to? <laughs> no, he could not. Okay, so he he definitely needs a little bit of rest. Yep. Then. Yep. Um, silly one for you. You guys have had quite a good run of luck at the coin toss lately. Yeah. What's your What's your strategy there? What's what, How do you keep? You'd have to ask right? those captains out there because we talk about it <clears throat> all the time of what we're going to do. And that's kind of the big joke is, what do I want to do this week? Because it's changed quite a bit. Uh, and so Kate and I kind of laugh about it. And Kate hasn't been out there for all of them, but it's kind of like, okay, what are you thinking? And I know he's excited when I say, oh, I want to take the ball. And I think he kind of turns away from me when I say, oh, I want to defer. Uh, but there's a lot of things that play into it every game. And for whatever reason, I don't know who's called it. I, I, if you ask me of the six games, who's called it each time, I don't have any idea. Um, but uh, they're on a hot streak, I think, right now. Uh, I don't know how many we have won. All of them. All six. Wow, that's pretty good. So, And I don't know how many times we've taken the ball. Three or four. OK, see, nobody really knows. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. You get, when you and other coaches are off, you know, looking at Friday games, the night before a road game, how, logistically, how do you guys all get back to that same location in, in time? Help. <laughs> Great donor support here. Uh, uh, for me, it was last week. Um, and if it's a home game, we usually are out. Uh, coordinators will never go out. They're always staying back here with the guys. And typically, we always have, you know, one or two assistants back as well. It was just Coach Anderson and I out um, uh, here last week, and Coach Stanner was out in Iowa. But, uh, um, you know, Taylor Bratt and his staff, they do a good job of, you know, facilitating, you know, places to go that we can get back. The other thing that plays into it uh, is the late start. You know, playing at 6.30 or 7 is a lot easier to do that than playing at 11. It's really hard. I don't think we had anybody out for Texas Tech. It's just too hard when you're playing at 11. And so, um, you know, every week we kind of evaluate it based on the game time. What was the explanation you got on the running into the punter versus roughing? You know, uh, we sent it in, and I have not gotten word back um, of what it, of what they saw. The, the official came over to me and said he did not – think he hit his plant leg and so um that's what i re what i think of as the rule is if if they hit the uh, the kicking leg it's typically running into if they go into the plant leg and, and i haven't received anything back yet <laughs> all right Thanks, everyone.